Hello and welcome back to day 27 of Mule Ford in depth training. So, till yesterday, we have completed the API design using Ravel. Now, we are going to generate the implementation. We are going to write the implementation for the Ravel and we'll deploy it to the runtime. Then, after that, we will see how to manage these APIs using API Manager. There are two approaches for configuring the APIs. One is a proxy based approach and another is auto discovery based approach. So first we will see how to use proxy based approach. And also we will secure our API using one policy called as basic authentication policy. And we'll try to understand how policies work. That's all. Let us get started. <clears throat> so, um, this is our API specification. Uh, it is available on Exchange. So, what we can do is when we are creating a project, we can point our project to that API. We want to generate an implementation for that specification. So, see how I'm going to do. I'll select File, New, Mule Project. I'll give a name, mm, restaurant dash S A P I dash I M P L. I'll suffix it with I M P L meaning implementation. Then here there is an option import a published API, or I can import a local RAML file, or I can point it to RAML from Design Center. So I have already published it to the exchange. So I just add the publish API from exchange. <clears throat> so I'll search for restaurant. Yes, restaurant as API, I will add it. Finish. So it will download the RAML API and it will create a Mule project. Let us see now. Once I click on finish, you can see first of all, the restaurant's S API is added to the project. It will be automatically added as a dependency in form.xml also, I will show you. Now, once I click on finish, the implementation flows will be automatically generated. Let us see first of all. Yes, it is created now it is asking me to switch to mule design perspective i will say yes so now i am in mule design perspective and this is a project which got created if you see there is only one xml in this xml there are some flows already generated so i will explain you the flows there is one flow with the name restaurants SAPA dash main. This is the main flow. Here we have a HTTP listener. If you see the connector configuration, it is using the port 8081. And it is mapped to what? Slash API slash star. Any URL starting with API. If any request is coming, and if the URI is starting with API, it will come here. Then after that, I have an API kit router. If you see API kit router is pointing, is configured with this router configuration. And actually this will be pointing to the RAML. So uh, router configuration name is restaurants SAPI dash config and API definition. So it automatically point to restaurants SAPI. Okay. So there are a lot of things which you need to understand. This router is configured with this API definition, restaurant as API. It will automatically detect the APIs and it will show in the drop down. Here it is pointing to restaurants as API. Fine. I'll come to these properties next. But what this router will do is to route to other flows. If you see, there are a lot of flows which got generated. 
Okay, if you see, there are a lot of flows automatically generated. The flow names are following some convention. See here, put to colon slash restaurants slash restaurant ID colon the the return MIME type application slash JSON. So actually, whenever a put request comes to slash restaurants slash restaurant ID. The API kit router will route it to this flow. That is the reason why the flow names are following this convention by default. If you see, there is one more flow delete to slash restaurants slash restaurants ID slash menu slash menu ID. So, whenever a delete request comes to this URI, then the API kit router will route it to this flow. Like that, there are a lot of flows. Now, let us see. Here, um, I want you to see one thing here. Mm. Yes, you get request to slash restaurants. Here, if you give a get request to slash restaurants, this flow will be invoked. And if you can see that there is a transform message already with status code as 500, and this is an error message. Okay, I will go to slash restaurants slash restaurant ID, you can see there are two transform message components. One is actually creating a variable restaurant underscore ID by accessing the URI parameter restaurant underscore ID. And you can see the next transform message is giving me the restaurant. Hey, how come this data is there? If you remember, I have given this as an example when I am defining the RAML. The same thing is used in the auto generated. Okay, these flows are automatically generated. Now, let's assume that I wanted to implement a logic for get restaurant by ID. So, what I will do is I'll create a new UL configuration file with name get dash restaurants dash by dash ID. flow separate xml and i will drag and drop whatever I, i'll create a flow get restaurant by id flow here i will write the logic to fire a query on database and get restaurant by id so right now i am not doing anything right now i'm just going to write a log message inside or i'll say getting restaurants by id actually i am not writing the implementation what i could do is i can i can use a database connected to fire a query on database and retrieve the restaurants by id assume that i have written it okay so now this is the implementation flow what i can do is i can go to the generated flows um where is the flow for slash restaurants slash id yeah this is the one for get request to slash restaurant slash id here what i will do is i'll drag and drop a flow reference and i'll point it to get restaurants by id flow good and i will just rename this display name also get restaurants by id flow fine so i could delete this transform message if i am actually pointing to the original flow but right now, I am not going to write the original implementation. Let this response be returned. Assume that I have done the implementation. Actually, I have not. Hmm? So let us test. OK, before testing, I want to tell you a few more things. Um, let me delete this generated XML. I want to show you how to regenerate it, deleting this. So the, okay, which I deleted. Okay, I deleted the implementation flow, sorry. I pressed Control Z. I wanted to delete this main flow. Delete. Okay. So the main flow got deleted. Let us see how it can be regenerated. Firstly, I want you to observe this pom.xml. In pom.xml, um, 
is there a dependency of my rest, uh, restaurant's SAPI? It is added as a Maven dependency, right? So you can see in the project under dependencies, uh, here is the actual RAML zip file. This is a fragments zip file. And here, this is the main RAML, right? Yes. So I'll right click on this. Um, restaurants SAPI, generate flows. That's all. This will generate the flows automatically. Actually, while creating the project also, this is how it automatically generated. You can see this flow is generated. This is the main flow. And here in the main flow, there are some error handlers for handling common errors like bad request, not found, method not allowed, not accepted, etc. Some common things. And I want you to understand one more flow called as console flow, restaurants SAPI dash console. Here, this HTTP listener is pointing, is mapped to slash console slash star, everything starting with console. And here, API kit console has a configuration pointing to a RAML file. Actually, whenever I give a request to this flow, it will generate the documentation automatically. Let us see. Okay. But before that, um, in the get restaurants by ID flow, I'll go again here. Where is that? Yes, this is the get restaurants by ID flow. I will drag and drop the flow reference again to point to the implementation. I'll rename the display name also. Okay. <clears throat> Assume that we are actually calling the implementation flow. We'll get finally this response, whatever has been auto generated. In real scenario, we'll be deleting it, but I just kept it as it is. So now I'm going to deploy this application. Let us change. Okay, the deploy application got deployed. And you can see there is one more window called as API Kit Consoles window automatically it started. It is asking me to open the console at this URL. If I click on open console, See, automatically the browser is going to localhost 8081 slash console. When I gave a request to 8081 slash console, the request will go to this console flow. See, this console flow is mapped to slash console slash star. So this AP kit console is actually generating this documentation. Okay. Now I want to actually click on get restaurants by id here i'll click on get in this console you can click on try out try it try making a request okay i want to give a request to slash restaurants slash the uri parameter restaurant id i'll pass 100 a dummy value and click on send it will give a request and I got the response 200 OK is the status. And I got this restaurant. So, what the get restaurants YD flow got invoked? Where is it? Yeah, this flow got invoked. And you can see here we are calling flow reference, and there I am writing a log. Let us see if I can see the log getting restaurant by ID. The call went to here, and uh, here the logger has written getting restaurants by ID. So this flow got invoked. If I have written the original implementation, it would have been executed and I would have got the response. But now we got whatever this uh, example we gave, right? That's okay, fine. So my assume that. In this way, we'll be generating the implementation flows. Good. We understood that we can generate the implementation. Now, what I want is, I want to manage my APIs. Okay. 
Um, let me try to give a request using Postman first. Okay, in Postman, I'll give a request to localhost 8081 slash restaurants slash ID 100. So any client, if it makes, okay, slash API, I forgot, slash API. If any client is making a request, the client is getting the response. Hey, I want to secure my API. I want to apply a security policy for my API. So without changing my code, how to add security policy? For this purpose, we can use API manager provided by any point platform. Now, let us see the situation. This is a Mule runtime. Assume that inside this Mule runtime, I have my API implementation running. Now, what I will do is in cloud, in MuleSoft's cloud, there is API manager component. API manager has a web UI. What I can do is I can log into browser. Through browser, I can log into my uh, account and I can go to API manager. In API manager, what I can do is I can create an app pointing to the API in the exchange. So we have published our API in exchange, right? By pointing to that API in exchange, I'll create an app in API manager. And so what this API manager will do is it will automatically generate a proxy application which can be deployed on a runtime called as gateway runtime. So I'll start something called as gateway runtime. What is this gateway runtime? Gateway runtime is similar to mule runtime, but specially designed to host proxy applications. So uh, API manager will generate a proxy and uh, I'll deploy the proxy onto gateway. Now, any client, they should never hit our original implementation directly. They should make a request to proxy. Proxy knows the original implementation URL. It will hit the implementation, give the response. Okay. But what is the advantage of this proxy? So let me tell you how we can configure some policies on this proxy. First of all, in gateway runtime, <coughs> there will be an agent application running. Once this proxy is deployed here, the agent will identify and will send information to API manager saying that, hey, this proxy application is running on this gateway. That means the proxy is registered with API manager. Okay. Now what I can do is from browser, I logged into API manager. On API manager, I'll configure a security policy. We'll see how I can configure. So what API manager will do, it will store that policy details in its database. That's all. Okay. Through browser, I configured a security policy. The API manager stored it in database. How does my proxy know about this policy configured? Actually, what happens? They, there will be agent running within the gateway. This agent will be polling the API manager at regular intervals. Hey, are there any new policies configured? At regular intervals, agent will be polling. Are there any new policies configured for this proxy? If yes. The API manager, it will see in the database and will return the policy related documents. Actually, there will be some XML files which contains the logic for the policy. That files will be downloaded by the agent and those files will be kept under a folder called as policies folder. That XML files which contain the logic will be kept under policies folder. That's all. Now, whenever a client is making a request, the request will go to proxy. We will check, are there any 
policies to be applied in the policies directory to check if yes first the policy related logic will be executed suppose if i have configured an authentication policy what this policy logic will do it will check if credentials are present in this request if credentials are not present it will send the error message directly if credentials are present and credentials are correct then the proxy will execute a request for the original implementation get the response and give it back so like that we can actually configure policy just through browser we don't need to write code through api manager we will be able to manage this api so the request will come to proxy proxy will actually make a request to the original implementation so i told you that the proxies will be deployed on gateway runtime actually in older versions of mule there were two separate runtimes gateway runtime and the original runtime but now actually the mule runtime also has gateway functionality so we don't have a separate gateway this can be a mule runtime itself okay so let us see how we can use api manager for managing our simple api okay actually we need to start the runtime the gateway runtime right actually gateway runtime is nothing but mule runtime so um, i will freshly extract the runtime i will delete whatever existing runtime i have to avoid any confusion so i have downloaded this uh, standalone runtime i will extract it okay it got extracted here very simple as you know how to start mule server i just have to go to bin and launch it okay this is there first is i will again go to uh, api manager first of all i have logged into my account in the left menu i'm going to api manager hmm. now Oh, first of all, I need to register this runtime on runtime manager. So I'll go to runtime manager first. And I will register my local server with runtime manager first. We know the process of registering a runtime with runtime manager. So quickly I will do it. I'll go to servers. I will add server i'll give my server so to register this my server i need to execute this command so i'll go to bin directory of my runtime i'll open the command prompts and then i'll paste that command as i'm using windows i can remove dot slash the mule agent onto my runtime. Yeah, it is saying mule agent platform. I will be able to see my server. It is in created. It. I want to start it. Very simple. I'll just execute mule. It will start and once it starts, I should see that this will become green in color. Let us wait. Okay. I can see that the server is up and kicking. Um, I'll go here. It is in running state. That's fine. Now I'll go to um, API manager. I want to register the API, whatever is in my exchange with API manager. See i am going to do you can see that there are no is formed i'll click on add a new api for managing it is asking hey first in which runtime do you want to deploy actually flex gateway is a new runtime 
which is designed uh, recently. We'll not deploy our proxies to Flex Gateway. We'll deploy our proxies to Mule Gateway. OK? If possible, I'll create a separate lecture on how to deploy your applications onto Flex Gateway separately. But now we'll go with deployments on Mule Gateway. Mule Gateway is nothing but our Mule runtime. Now there are two ways. One is to deploy a proxy and other option we'll see next. I want to deploy a proxy. Then where do you want to deploy your proxy on Cloud Hub? No. Cloud Hub 2.0 Cloud Hub? No. Hybrid. Hybrid means I want to deploy it on hybrid. Now, once I selected hybrid, it will search for all the registered servers. I'll select, I want to deploy it on my server next. Okay, it is asking which API you want to add for managing. Uh, automatically here, select API from exchange is there. This API is already there on the exchange. I will select this. Then it is asking me, okay, I have to select what is the asset type, RAML. API version is v1.0 and asset version is 1.0.1. .1. Next. Uh, okay. Now, there are, there are some things that needs to be configured. Downstream, it is asking, configure the API instance set it, settings related to inbound traffic. What is this downstream? Okay. Let me tell you what we are trying to do. Assume that this is a mule runtime. Actually, right now we are using this mule runtime as a gateway runtime. And here we are config, we are we are going to deploy our proxy. And assume that this is another mule runtime where our actual API implementation is running. Whenever request comes to proxy, the request has to for this proxy, the original implementation is the downstream. Okay. So I have to tell what is the downstream API details. So at what port 8081 and the protocol is HTTP base path. If you remember, I have given slash API in the generated implementation slash API is a base path. If you remember, see for the HTTP listener, do you remember? It is mapped to slash API slash star. So slash API is a base path. I can give a label to the instance, which is optional. Uh, so I will not give optional data. Let it go. Next. What is the upstream URL? So here I'll give a upstream URL. OK, sorry. Sorry, I did a mistake. I, I, I got confused. Actually, this one is the upstream. The original implementation is upstream. Good. If I make a mistake, you will remember it. That's good. So this is downstream. So when I was configuring the downstream details, here is a port at which I want my proxy to listen on. Anyway, 8081 is used uh, the original implementation. So in order not to have what conflict, I will make it as 8082. And base path, I uh, will give API. Upstream URL, this is the original. Confirm deploy. Now, what 
and it will do the deployments. API is not created due to an error. Why? Why is it so? Do I see any errors here? No. I will again click on save and deploy. Yeah. Now API is being deployed to Mule Hybrid. Hmm. It is saying the API status is unregistered. So now what will happen? The API manager will actually create a proxy and the proxy automatically gets deployed to this logs deploying restaurant SAPI something here. Yes. So this is the actual proxy application that is getting deployed. Let us wait for some time. Hmm. Now I can see the log uh, status started. Hmm. Now if I go to API manager, here it is showing the API status is still unregistered. On some browsers, this might be a problem. Yeah, now you can see API successfully deployed. It is coming. And in some time, I should see that this API status will turn to green and says registered. On some browsers, it will be delayed. Let me refresh it once. API status is still unregistered. Sometimes it will take a few seconds to turn to green. Let us wait. Hmm. Now you can see API status is active. Now what I can do is I can go to my postman. See, at 8081, the original implementation is running. I'm hitting the original implementation. I'm waiting. Now let me hit this port. Same URL. Now I'll make a request to 8082. So I'm hitting the proxy. Proxy will hit the original application and I'm getting the response. Okay. Now let us try to understand what has happened once I deployed the proxy. As I told you, once the proxy is deployed, there will be an agent running within the gateway, it will register this proxy with API manager app. That's the reason why it turned green. And the agent will be polling at regular intervals. Are there any new policies? If there are policies, they will be downloaded into policies folder. OK, so let me go to enterprise runtime folder policies. You can see there are two things, offline policy and policy templates, etc. Now. Let me go and configure one policy, security policy. So what I can do is, in API manager, I am under restaurants SAPI. I'll again go back. I'll come back again here. See, in API manager, this is the API. I will click on this API. Under that, I can select policies. I can add policies. I can add a policy. There are multiple policies coming under different categories. Under security, there are some security related policies. OK, I want to use basic authentication. There are two policies, basic authentication, simple basic authentication, LDAP. Normally, in organizations, We'll be having a lightweight directory application protocol server, LDAP server, where our credentials can be stored. Right. You can you can actually click on this learn more to understand more about this policy. LDAP security manager policy. LDAP authentication enables you to establish configuration details for an open LDAP or active directory LDAP. So if in your organization, if you're having your credentials in an LDAP server, you can select this. Normally in our enterprises, we will be having, it will work out. But now I don't have an LDAP server. 
So generally for testing purpose, we don't need to have LDAP server. We can use basic authentication, simple policy. Here we'll do our username and credentials here itself. Okay, so next. Glass for username and password. I'll give Siva and password is secret. I'll give. And uh, you can select here apply configuration to all API methods and resources, or you can apply this policy only for particular methods and some patterns. Right now, I want the policy to be applied to all resources in this API. So username is Siva and password is secret. Okay, apply. Once I hit apply, as I said, the API manager will store the information in database. At regular interval, the agent will be polling the API manager. If there are any new policies configured, the agent will download the corresponding policies. Observe here, in this folder, I will parallelly show you this runtime as well. In some time, the agent will download the policies from API Manager. You can see the logs as well as the policy related uh, files downloaded onto policies folder. Let us wait for a few seconds. Do I apply? Yes, I applied. So let us wait for a few more seconds. Yes. Now here you can see that there is a folder HTTP basic authentication mule. And here also you can see the log applied HTTP basic authentication mule, right? So now the policy related files are downloaded. Let us go and see what is there inside this folder. There is one XML file which contains something similar to flows it's a flow xml file you can see there is something called as http colon policy colon proxy a lot of configuration is there it looks like a mule configuration file only right so this policy files are downloaded now if i make a request from the client the request will go to proxy Proxy will execute the corresponding logic, policy related logic, which will check if credentials are there. Let me go to Postman and make a request to Proxy right now <clears throat> without passing credentials. You can see I got 401 for bid 401 unauthorized. So I'll pass credentials. Um, actually, I secure using basic authentication, right? So what I have to do is I have to add a header called as authorization. I have to pass my credentials in a HTTP header called as authorization. So when a client is sending a request, client should send a header called as authorization. And its value should be base 64 encoded username colon password. Right, I have to actually generate base64 encoded username column password and add it as a value to uh, there should be basic space and then this value. How to add through Postman? It provides as a shortcut. What I can do, I can go to authorization and select um, basic auth. Here, actually, I can configure the username and password. Okay. Automatically, if I go to headers now, authorization header is added. And the value, as you can see, basic space. This is the base 64 encoded value of my username and password. Now, after adding this header, if I send a request, now send authentication attempt failed. Good. So again, I'll change the password. Now send. Yes, I got the response. So you understood how I just configured a policy by logging into API Manager. Uh, I clicked on Policies tab, 
added a policy called as basic authentication. What happened? You have to visualize this. When I configured, API manager just stored the policy details in database. Agent at regular interval holds this API manager and it has downloaded the policy files and kept inside policies folder. That's all. Whenever a client is making a request, the proxy will execute the corresponding policies. If everything is fine, then only the request will go to the implementation. Otherwise, the proxy will give the error message. So this is how we are able to apply one simple policy. In next lecture, we will discuss about few more policies, how they actually work. Okay. So actually took a proxy based approach in next video actually i'm going to show you how to use something called as auto discovery approach where we don't need a separate runtime for proxy we will discuss that right and i'll compare when to use this and when not to use this so we'll see it in the next video that's all now what you can do is after you complete watching this video you follow the steps whatever i followed deploy the proxy configure basic authentication and check on your machine until you practice you will not get confidence right so before you go to the next video make sure that you practice then only go to okay see you next video to uh, understand few more details